we're going to start by writing the server-side code for our applications. And this is because we're going to use the exact same server-side code in all of our applications. So I'm here in the terminal, and let's go ahead and make a directory that we'll just call template. This will be the project template which will hold our server-side code, which we can then copy for each one of our applications. So I'll cd into template, and now I know that we're going to use the express backend, so let's do npm install, and we'll say express. And I also know that we're going to need the body parser package so that we can parse the bodies of HTTP requests that come from our client side. So let's go ahead and install the express package and the body parser package. All right, so now we have those node modules installed. Let's go ahead and open a server.js file. So the first thing to do will be to pull those in so we can require express and we'll also require body parser. Then we want to create our express application. So we'll say app equals express and we'll call the express function. Now the next thing we need to think about is a source of data. In a more serious project, I would probably use something like MongoDB here. However, since we're focusing on front-end libraries in these videos, we don't want to spend too much time thinking about this in the back. So what I'm going to do is paste in some basic data here. As you can see here, we have an object called data, and we have a bunch of properties of this object, which are our database records. As you can see, we're using their ID numbers as both the ID property on the record and also the actual property name inside of the data object. We also have this ID variable, which will allow us to easily create new IDs for new records as we add them. So since we're building a contact application, we have our first name, last name, and email properties. If you want to customize this, you can do whatever you'd like. So now it's time to start building our actual Express application. And the first thing we'll do is say app.use, and we will use bodyparser.json. Remember, JSON here is a function that you need to call. And what this will do is when an HTTP request comes in from a browser, if the body of that request includes a JSON string, bodyparser.json here will go ahead and parse that for us. Now, our projects will all have a public directory, which we want to serve statically. So let's do app.use, and we'll say express.static, and as an argument to express.static, we'll pass dot slash public, so that it knows to serve the public directory statically. I'll just throw in at this point that if you're not familiar with Express, it's a very easy to learn Node server-side library, and under this video, you'll find a link to another Tuts Plus course that I did that will teach you all about Express. So now let's go ahead and start setting up some routes. The first route that we want is the one that will serve our array of contacts when we do a GET request to it, and also the route that we can post to to create new records. So I'm going to use Express's app.route function, and this route will be API slash contacts, and this route will accept both GET requests and POST requests. And of course, we'll pass a callback function to each one of these HTTP verb methods. If you've used Express before, you know that these callbacks take a request object and a response object as their two arguments. So inside our get request for the API contacts route, what we need to do is return an array of all the records in this data object here. Now we can't return the data object itself because it's an object and not an array. So what we can do here is say object.keys and we can get the keys for object.data. So now we have an array of keys and then we can map this array of keys and for each key we will return data square brackets key and this way we now have an array of all of the records within this data object and so then let's just wrap this whole line in response.json and so now our get request here will send those records back as an array that was pretty simple okay so now let's look at our post function here Again, the callback will take request and response objects, and this time we need to read the request body because that is our new record. So let's create a record object here, which will be request.body, and then we'll set record.id equal to, and we wanna have this ID up here. Notice it's set to seven, which is the last ID that we already used. So we're going to have to do plus plus ID. So we'll increment it, and then we'll use the new number. And then we can set data square brackets record.id, equals the new record. And so that is basically the insert into our database. And finally, we will return with response.json our record. And with most of our front end libraries, when they see that this record returns with an ID, they know that it has been successfully saved in the database. Okay, so those are the two functions that we need for our general route here, API slash contacts. However, we're gonna have a more specific route here. And this is for slash API slash contacts slash ID. 
And there are three different HTTP methods that we need to plan for with the contacts slash ID route. If we have a get request to that route, it means we want to get that specific record from the database. If we have a put request to that route, it means we want to update that record in the database. And if we have a delete request to that route, it means we want to delete that record from the database. So if we're getting the record, it's as easy as doing response.json, and we want to return data, square brackets, request.params.id. And request.params.id is the token that we've made in our route string here. So we just return it through response.json. In our put request, we want to replace whatever is currently in the database at this ID with whatever the request body is. So we can say data square brackets request.params.id equals request.body. And then we'll just send a response.json the request.body. We'll just send that back, just like that. Finally, for delete, we want to delete the property in the object. So we'll say delete data square bracket request dot params dot id. And then we'll just do response.json once more and we'll send back null. There's really nothing important to send back when we have deleted a record. And that is all we really need for our API. Because we're using a really simple database here, just a JavaScript object, there's really not that much to do in our REST methods. So the last thing we want to do is app.get, and this is going to get every route that is not matched before this. So the way Express works, if you aren't familiar with it, is requests that come into our application basically will filter down through all of our different routes here. So first they're going to hit the body parser here, and there's no specific route for this, so that means every request goes through the body parser. And then they're going to hit our static folder here, and if any of our routes match something in our static folder, the request will end there because it can send back whatever file was in the static folder. But if the file was not found there, it'll pass through, and if it matches this route, we'll use it here, or if it matches this route, Route, we'll use it here. So when we get down to here, this is our catch-all route saying, if nothing at all has caught this route before, then what we're going to do is just send our index.html page. And this is great when we have client-side routing, because this means we can use our push state router on the front end so that we can have URL changes. But then if they refresh the page on that changed URL, that new URL is not a resource that we have on our server here. So it will get caught here by this catch-all route. And what we'll do is response.send file. And we will send, and we have to do double underscore dir name to get the current directory. And then we're going to add slash public slash index.html. And so if nothing else matches, we'll send our index.html file. The very last step is to start up the server. So we'll say app.listen, and we'll just listen on port 3000. And so now we have our complete web server. We could see this in action if we come back to our terminal here, and I will run node server. Our server is running. So we'll go to localhost port 3000 slash API slash contacts. And if we do this, you can see we get our array of all of our different contacts. If we go to API slash contacts slash two, for example, we only get a single contact. So that is the server side code that we'll be using throughout this series.